around after I left. And, oh. All right. Well, after all that awkward silence, let's go ahead and open up to 102. 102. I stand amazed in the presence. If you're able to stand, which I imagine you can, could, although there's a lot of food down there, but if you can stand, if you're able to stand with us. Um, 102. I stand amazed in the presence. I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene And wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be How marvelous, how wonderful Savior's love to me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own griefs, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever Savior's love for me. He took my sins and my sorrows and made them his very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever Sing tonight, may stand for word of prayer. Don, last opportunity as a um, while you're here, go ahead and if you wouldn't mind praying for us this afternoon. Amen. You may be seated and turn to 111. 111. And can it be? And we'll do the first, second, and last verses there.
Back to 108. Before we sing this one, I have a, um, another hymn history uh, to read about this song, The Love of God, here on 108. F.N. Lehman lived in California and worked in a Pasadena packing house. Through business, re uh, through business reverses, he had lost everything and was now spending his time in hard manual labor, lifting and moving as much as 30 tons of lemons and oranges a day, which then were packed into crates for shipment. From all outward appearances, this certainly would not be a place conducive to anything, to doing anything artistic and especially writing songs. But as is so often said, the exception proves the rule, and the love of God is one of the exceptions. Mr. Lehman was a Christian who rejoiced in his salvation. Therefore, it is no wonder that on Sunday evening, after hearing a heartwarming sermon on God's love, he could hardly contain himself. In fact, so much so that he found it hard to go to sleep. The next morning, as he was having breakfast, the thrill of the previous evening had not left him. And on his way to work, he began to compose a song with God's love as the theme. In those days, the oranges and lemons were packed in crates made of a, the thin wooden slats with solid wood ends. Often, some pieces of the slats would break off, and I can envision from that time to, from that, time, to time, Lehman would pick up one of these and jot down his song ideas on them. On through the day, the song expanded, and by the end of the day, I'm sure he'd had, he had a, collected a, quite a few of these important pieces of wood. He could hardly wait to get home to put his new song ideas on paper. On arriving home, he hurriedly went to the old upright piano, and with the help of this day's collection of ideas, he began to transcribe the song on paper. Soon, he had a finished melody with two stanzas and a chorus, but in those days, a song had to have at least three stanzas to be complete. Someone has said that today a song is complete when it has just three words. As he tried to write the third stanza, he found that the words just wouldn't fall into place. What would he do? Sometime before, he had heard a poem about the love of God and had been given a copy of it printed on a card. He reasoned, if I could only find that poem, for it is so wonderfully pictured the vastness of, for, for it so wonderfully pictured the vastness of God's love, maybe I could get an idea upon which to build this last stanza. His search was rewarded, for he soon found the card. He had used it as a bookmark. As Lehman read the words, his heart was again thrilled as it had been when, he first, when at first he had read them. He noticed that at the bottom of the card, some smaller but heavier printing gave this story. These words were found written on a cell wall in a prison some 200 years ago. It is not known why the prisoner was incarcerated. Neither is it known if the words were original or if he had heard them somewhere and had decided to put them in a place where he could be reminded of the greatness of God's love. Whatever the circumstances, he wrote them on the wall of his prison cell. In due time, he died, and the men who had the job of repainting his cell were impressed by the words. Before their paintbrushes had obliterated them, one of the men jotted them down, and thus were, they were preserved. With poem in hand, Lehman went to the piano. On the spur of the moment, he began to voice the words to the melody. They fitted perfectly. It was a miracle. Lehman's song was then published with these words as the last stanza. It is within recent years that I have become acquainted with the facts that make the writing of this song even, an even greater miracle. I have found that the original third stanza was, written, stanza was written in Hebrew around the year 1000 by Meyer ben Isaac Nehoria, a Jewish rabbi. I like to feel that God, knowing that Lehman was going to write a song, also realized that Lehman would have trouble writing a third stanza, and so he chose this rabbi who, through not accept, or though not accepting Christ as the Messiah, did possess the skills to graphically paint a picture of God's love in words. 
He would preserve these words, and then hundreds of years later, he would have them translated by his prisoner into a language that did not as yet exist, namely, exist, namely English. And to think that he did it in the exact meter to fit Lehman's melody. And so let's go ahead and sing 108, The Love of God. The love of God is greater far than tongue or pen can ever tell. It goes beyond the highest star and reaches to go to 443 443 thank you for your singing tonight you guys are doing a great job just this short little chorus here i love you lord and i lift up my i lift my voice Okay, I want to go ahead and do our prayer time. Just to let you know what we're going to do um, uh, after the, after the uh, let's do this. Why don't we save a song for later? Uh, for uh, after our prayer time, we will. Sorry, um, take some testimonies that if uh, if you would like to do a little um, sharing on the Stark Weathers and uh, your love for them, uh, we'll just open that up for that opportunity and then. After everyone stops, we'll let the Stark Weathers, if they would like to say anything, as they get ready to um, head out. So what is, what is the exact date you guys are planning to hit the road? Is it Thursday? Oh, in the evening. Oh, okay. Oh, are you? Okay. Okay. Oh. 
Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 So pray for the Starkweathers before you hit the <laughs> hit the bed on Thursday, and uh, so yeah. So we want to pray for them. Concerning that, uh, let's just uh, let's do go ahead and do our prayer time here. Though, um, for those in authority, uh, we're to our U.S. senators, and let me see, Chris. A microphone runner yet we do okay um so it, 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 and if you have something you want to say about the lord but this is directed toward the stark weathers and um just the blessing they've been to you in some way um it is interesting as you read paul in the book of acts that he was never by himself when he started his mission work he always had a team that went with him and often you'll find that they were encouragements to him along the way and so that's that's what faithful church members do to a pastor and so i just appreciate don and Lori and their faithfulness if there was something happening um, that they were there if there was something that 
should happen. They suggested that, and so I just appreciate you know them from the very start. I remember um, I, I learned rather quickly that Don had a problem with the blood sugar. Um, <laughs> I won't share the whole details, but I do remember our first dinner and. Uh, Don's blood sugar was, and if it gets really, I, I'm not sure how it gets low or high, I'm not sure it gets down low, that um, it's like someone who's had a little too much alcohol. And so the first time we had a dinner, Don was rather tipsy. And I didn't know, and I was thinking, man, I gotta counsel this guy. And I uh, didn't know what was going on. And then later on, Lori says, oh, you know, said something, and then I realized, oh, this is a, this is a medical issue, not a, not a drug issue or alcohol issue. Um, so yeah, so that was that was an interesting beginning. I don't think that was, I, I don't know how long you guys were here up to that time, but I know it was fairly, you know, first dinner we had anyway, yeah, something, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. So yeah, so so interesting things happen in church <laughs> along the way, but um, they they just became someone who was always there, and uh, I just say that for both of them. And I know Don's used his multitudes of skills and insight into things to help us so many ways. So I just want to say thank you and thank you, Lori, for that. Um, there's one other thing that I do vividly remember, and that's when Don wore a cucumber suit. <laughs> uh, Pickle, I'm sorry, Pickle. Yes, he was the pickle for our, our family fun night there on October 31st one time, so um, that, that'll be a vivid memory for me for a long, a long time. But uh, again, your faithfulness has been a great blessing, so I wanted to say thank you. Anybody else want to share anything along the way? Did you ever seen his pickle suit, Dave? Have you? No, no, okay. No, no, no. <laughs> sorry I brought that up, Don. <laughs> They are somewhere. Anybody else like to share a thought? Yes. Okay, Eden. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Yes. Why don't we bring the mic up? Yes. When I first met Lori, um, I knew Don, and yes, I. Also had a low blood sugar event with him on a, had something to do with the side of a lake and a deep bank and me holding on to his collar while he lolled around seemingly inebriated while Dave went to get food. <laughs> um, but when I met Lori, I thought, is, is there a problem here? Does anybody see the resemblance? I, I struggled with that, especially when Michael was born and Everybody at the hospital said, oh, he looks just like his Uncle Don. I'm thinking, could you guys like rephrase that and say he looks just like his brother Dave? Um, these were odd situations. <laughs> Lori and I were very much alike. And um, I found that she and I were like oil and water together. And someone told me that you can't pray for somebody and dislike them. Or argue with them it's just not possible God doesn't allow it and um, sure enough I was praying for her and I wasn't I, w I thought I was praying for her but what I was really doing was praying for myself and didn't know it God was changing me and um, as I became more like Christ and more forgiving and loving of those around me despite their differences from my thoughts they became the family that I wanted, that I choose to be with, and they will be very missed, despite the fact that <laughs> I, well, that was kind of my intention. <laughs> if I'm crying, you're crying, girlfriend. Um, I will miss them, and um, hopefully I'm better at keeping in touch with them than I have been with all the other friends that have moved away. Right, right behind you, there is someone else who wanted to use it. Um. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm going to try not to cry myself. Um, I'm, I know I've been here for, for going on five years now, but I still, still feel kind of new. Um, 
I know I've not been here for very long, but when I did come here, I was still am sometimes homesick because I'm away from family and I moved all the way across the country to do God's work and to do God's will in my life. And I remember coming and being so scared and not knowing anybody. And I know the Frickses and the Joneses were just so open and kind and, and another family that was just so willing to be a part of my life were the Star Brothers. And, you know, not even knowing me, asking me if I wanted to go out to dinner or asking me how I'm doing and just keeping in touch with me and talking with me um, it just made me feel like I had a family away from family and it was, it was lovely that my church is this way and that they were this way and I just really appreciate them. Amen. Amen. Anyone else? Yes, toward the back. We got some over, all the way to the back. Oh, never mind. Uh, Don and Lori, I know uh, they're a big part of this church, and they're involved in many, many facets of this church. But, of course, I spent a lot, lot more time alongside Don because uh, when uh, Don and I and Gary Lees, we worked on all the, uh, uh, a lot of the capital projects, like the bathrooms and the pumps and whatever, but, uh, you know, a uh, very integral part and, and uh, Don's uh, skills and knowledge uh, that has been volunteered to this church are uh, immeasurable, and when you think about it, uh, uh, there's there's a lot of people that do things in this church, and you know, uh, I I think that uh, uh, they will they will sorely be sorely missed. Uh, just as another couple who left a few years back, the Lees, uh, and that's how uh, we became uh, closer to to Don and Lori is through the Lees. Uh, when we gather together for so like some of the holidays and so uh, I, and then of course Don is in the choir as well and and so uh, he, I, I think that uh, there will be a big uh, big hole left in this church that big shoes to fill uh, so they're a wonderful couple and we wish them all the best. Love you. <laughs> and then uh, back in the, Alina's got, yes. Uh, the first I want to say as the couple, so they have been very encouraging. They always be at church, even if they come in from somewhere, they be always at church, especially on a Wednesday. And um, they always have to say something either about somebody praying or praise. So that was being, they always have something to bring to the Lord. Mm -hmm. That was a good, good example and, and good, um, it is a good Christian. As I lo know Lori more, I really enjoy her at the Bible classes, the study that we have and ladies retreat um, and um, she's was a kind of unique woman look like in in my mind i put her higher than me look like her position her work but every time she talks she never put anybody down look like i am smarter or i'm no more so that was really kind of humble spirit Amen. and um the one was example that somebody did damage something at church and I got frustrated and I was, I was Jerry Lee was here and I was expressing my, as I usually, and Lori, and, and she said, it's okay, it's already done. There's nothing we can, it, we can just fix it and it's already done. So the, the way she approached the problem, it was just so um, like, very good, good thing to follow. I 
we're gonna miss her. I personally gonna miss them as a couple and especially Lori, such a unique woman. And one time she kind of sent a sad example. She said, she said, oh, I'm, uh, uh, Marilyn Neiman was a good example for me. And she mentioned the other woman I thought she would not say, but it was just, it is like a God spirit that she, she doesn't look at the, um, the other stuff. She just look as the, to follow the Lord. I enjoy that and praise Amen. the Lord for that. Amen. Amen. Okay. Do we have any others? Okay. Well, let's, let's do this. Um, we'll let Don and Lori say something. So if we could bring the mic up, up here, anybody else? Oh, I'm sorry. So um, one thing, well, with Don, I've been praying when they were having, every time they would have something happen that delayed their departure, I thought, oh, maybe the Lord wants him to stay here. Maybe the Lord wants him to stay here. And <laughs> I would even bug him about that every once in a while. I said, you know, maybe the Lord wants you to stay here. We got, could come out and do maintenance in the church, and, and, and uh, we certainly have that need here. And, uh, and then, um, but I knew that he would do what the Lord wanted him to do. And that finally, when they were able to sell, and when they were able to go out there and find the house, and the one that you didn't even expect to get, and then be able to get it when you went out there, and that was all in faith, I think, just going out there, because I don't think you really planned that originally, did you, to go out there? And so um, they, uh, that, that was just amazing to see that. And that's the way Don's been. He's one just wants to do what the Lord wants him to do. And uh, with Lori, Boy, I tell you, there's, you just don't know this. I don't know if I've ever said this to you or not before, but uh, you resemble my mom a lot, and you're not old enough to be my mom. Just, uh, just to make you feel better. <laughs> However, um, some of the expressions you, you have, and just the, I don't know if it's the shape of your head, or but from behind, from the side, and, and just even then, when you were looking back at Yelena, and I was, I was like, wow, she just reminds me of my mom so much. And my mom was, he kind of had similar personalities. And it's, I've never really treated you like my mom because you're not really old enough to be my mom. And so, um, but it's been a blessing just to see, because you have that same mindset that she had. My mom was a very giving person. Um, she wasn't saved till later in life, but uh, she was very giving and kind. And that's what I think of you as and so it's been a blessing to know you both and lord willing well we know we'll get to see each other one day and uh but lord willing maybe even here on earth at some time there we go okay how many hours is it just 11 uh, it's just 11 hours of driving but uh, i guess you could fly in somewhere and rent a car or something but uh um we would we if the lord allows us to do that we'd love to to do that and uh we thank you for your service here and i'm just Happy to have known you, and such a blessing that you guys have been. So, is is there another one? Oh yes, okay. We do have over here, Mrs. Hodgins. Well. I am very grateful for this couple. Um, Laurie has sent me many a beautiful card, and her messages have always been so uplifting, handwritten, and I have been touched with how many people she stays in touch with. In our Sunday school class, we take uh, prayer requests. And Laurie always has at least maybe 20 or so prayer requests for people that she knows and that she's praying for them and that are needy. And uh, now her husband, Don, I appreciate his voice. What? a voice this man has. He gets up there behind that pulpit and he can raise the roof. It's, it's just wonderful. His, every time he sings, I am, I am so blessed. And 
again. We love you, and we'll miss you, and uh, maybe we'll actually take a trip and uh, possibly visit you before our, our time is up. So thank you, dear ones. We love you. Amen. Any others? Oh, Miss Lurleen, Mrs. Jones. I won't even try to remember all of them. But yes, Lori is such a giving person, and she's so quiet about it. She doesn't, she doesn't publicize it. And I've heard from so many different people or read on social media or seen on social media all of the ways that she's been involved or giving or, or being a blessing to I think of when she would um, teach some of the children to knit and crochet. Was it knit or crochet? Something with that that I don't do. Um, she, the, she and Dawn had our young adult group out to archery. She's taken innumerable people. They, sorry, Don. <laughs> They've taken a new <laughs> Lori's the heart. <laughs> no. They've taken innumerable people to to meals or or ball games or all kinds of different things and just the the, the ponchos have gone to so many <laughs> places. Um, and then I think my favorite thing about Don that I'll miss is um, your testimonies of your your work situations where um, you would be in the situation and you would be able to witness to somebody or. You would see how God was was leading you and helping you in these particular situations, and those were always such a blessing to me. So we're gonna miss you guys, and we'll likely come out and visit. So just get the room ready. Okay, amen. Okay, anybody else? Okay, if we could bring it up to the Starkweathers and um, the mic. Yes. Do you need some more? Okay. I don't really want to thank everybody for all the nice words. Um, I wasn't going to do this. <laughs> but, um, you know, the, the way I've been um, stretched as a man and as a Christian in this church is just incredible. Um, you know, Chris Haynes... Um, stretched me I, I don't know if you all know this but I'm a bass when I sing That's I've been a bass since I was like in ninth grade and so I can like sing a low C and I didn't have an upper register and then um, we didn't all of a sudden we didn't have any tenors um, when, Chuck when Chuck Apperson left we had no tenors to sing and Chris came to me and he said Don he said you think you could uh, sing tenor and I was just like <laughs> Um, well, I'll give it a go. I don't know. Well, it's kind of funny. I had a uh, high school music teacher that told me, you know, basses are just la lazy tenors. And I thought, <laughs> what? <laughs> well, you know, I come to find out that that's absolutely true. Um, because Chris has stretched me to where I can hit a high G now. I mean, I, when I first started singing tenor, it was a stretch. I could barely get up in just the basic tenor register. And uh, it just, it's been such a blessing for that. Um, you know, the guidance that Chris and Emily and uh, Laura Smith, when she was here, the accompanying them on the, on the piano, um, just to be able to, um, yeah, and Tim also, Tim Hicks, he's not here tonight, I don't think. Um, but uh, I really appreciate just the, the stretching of, you know, my musical abilities. Um, I always loved to sing when I was a kid. I kind of gave it up when I got out of high school. Um, I sing in um, all sorts of different plays and stuff like that. And uh, I had always kind of missed it. And uh, when I got into church, uh, when, when I was saved in 1998, um, up at, at Heritage Baptist Church, um, actually I was saved down in Portland at a, a large meeting, business meeting. Um, they stretched my, stretched me. They said, you know, um, if you come, you know, every day, we'll pay for your um, meeting. And it was it wasn't a small chunk of change. And I was like, well, you don't have to do that, but I'll I'll come every day. So the first Sunday that I went, um, that was like in July, I think, or June, and uh, the message was given, and I was like, huh, you know, I felt a little bit of a tug. 
So then in November of that year, I went to a larger uh, meeting down in uh, the Portland Rose Garden. And this other fellow got up and started giving the message. And uh, I've told you all this before that um, when he said, that I could have a personal relationship with my Lord. It, it touched me big time. It was like, oh, what do you mean? You know, I've sat there and thought about it for a long time. And uh, the, the fellow went on through his service. It was probably about an hour after that. And he said, you know, um, for those who want to come down. And I mean, I was leaps and bounds down the stairs, up to the front, you know, I want to be there. And, uh, I'd been introduced to uh, Heritage Baptist Church at the time through David and Tori were up there. So I went up there and we began to fellowship and uh, um, the choir director, um, actually his wife, you know, asked me one day, she says, you know, you sing pretty good in choir, you know, why don't you sing a, a solo? And I was like, I don't know about that, you know, I haven't done anything like that in years. So I, I don't remember the song I sang, um, but I was, it was God stretching me to be able to glorify him. Amen. That's right, yeah, day by day. Um, so anyway, um, the other things that, have, that I am so appreciative of this church is just the ability to be able to work with people like Robin, be able to fellowship with Robin and Paula, um, the Dave's, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the uh, um, Chris and Emily Haynes and the children, the girls, it's just so wonderful to watch those girls grow um, into just fantastic kids. I mean, they're just becoming great adults. And I, it's such a, a credit to what Christ does to a family's heart by raising children like that. You know, it's, you don't see that in everyday life, it's, which really is always really pulled at me, it's like, man, you know, why are those kids so out of control? Well, if they don't have Christ in their life, they don't have a prayer. There's nothing to focus on. You know, they talk about ADD and ADHD, and that's just not having Christ in your life. You know, I understand there's some people that, I, I'm ADD and ADHD. I haven't any problems with that since I came to know Christ. It's just gone. Um, you couldn't, my wife wouldn't attest to that, but <laughs> sometimes I have a hard time paying attention to, to things that she wants me to pay attention to, but um, I just, I really appreciate every single one of you. Um, it's been great to work with uh, Dan Rasmussen, uh, learning some of the things that he knows about carpentry, um, and just sharing it with me, you know, when we laid all the carpet downstairs, um, just how to do all that, you know, um, to be able to use this kind of um, things in my life when I went to work at the hospital. You know, I started out as a guy that just painted walls and changed light bulbs. And they didn't need me to do anything else. Well, through attrition, um, pretty soon they had nobody else to fix all this stuff. And they just asked me one day, you know, can you fix this stuff? So, yeah. So I started fixing things. Well, I, I made some major changes in the entire corporation because they, I was on a phone call one day um, for repairs. Um, the guys were talking about, you know, it costs too much to keep this stuff going. We're going to have to do a different kind of bid or something like that. And uh, they were talking about nurse calls. And I said, what do you mean you have to replace the whole nurse call? I said, you just fix them. And there was this big pause. There was like 15 supervisors on the phone, you know, head supervisors for hospitals or regionals. And uh, they, this one fellow pipes up and he says, what do you mean you can fix them? I said, they're just parts. You just replace the parts that are broken. So that box, one of those boxes cost like $280. Well, I was replacing them with, you know, buy parts and fix them for 10 bucks, plus my time, you know, which was just a few screws and you just, and you figure things out as you go. I really want to challenge anybody that doesn't know something about something and you're confronted with that, don't be afraid to, to grow. Hey, Google. How do I do this? It's, I mean, I learned how to fix an ECG, electrocardiogram. 
I'm not an electrician. I don't know how to fix stuff like that. But I, that's exactly how I did that. I went on Google, followed the directions, fixed the thing. Almost got fired for it because I fixed a, a big piece of equipment. And uh, But anyway, I'm kind of getting carried away about all that. Um, <laughs> but I really, I really appreciate everything that everybody's done for me. Um, the leadership of Mr. Hodgins, um, our um, Deacon Zach and Haley Smith, we th I thank you so much. Um, just the friendship of everybody here. Um, the leadership of Pastor, the friendship of Rick and Lurleen, just everybody, anybody that I haven't mentioned, I'm sorry. It's, it, I just I appreciate every single one of you. And uh, continue to be who you are and continue to grow in everything you do. I told Mrs. Hodgins that she wasn't allowed to talk to me today because she was going to make me cry. And I'm sorry, everybody, you, you all made me cry, and that's all right. I'm so blessed to have been able to come to this church with all of you. It's made me grow as a, as a woman of God. I'm, I had so many friendships with all of you, whether we meet on a daily day basis or we email verses back and forth or we pray for one another. We have long distance friendships with people who've moved away from church. Pastor Neiman has got us on prayer lists, all of us, all of you, thank you. And they pray for each and every one of us in the church as well. They've been cheering us on for this Montana trip, understanding that it's the Lord's will for our life. And he knows that he, the Lord has something for us to do at the new next church. He's placed us in a home that's three blocks from the church, which happens to be the church that Emily's mom and dad go to in Laurel. So we know some people there. The Lord's step in each and every move of this we're thankful that it's it's not really goodbye because we'll see some of you. We know we're going to see the Haynes at least once a year as they travel through Montana to on their way back to Minnesota. And I wasn't kidding when I said to Rick that the, we have a spare bedroom. You're welcome to come and visit. Maybe not all at once, but if you just email, <laughs> come. we'll put long, chairs or tents out on them. Just schedules them because I'm moving it. <laughs> just come and see us that the door is always open you can stay in touch facebook email and we're always going to pray for you all and thank you so much for the friendship over the years amen thank you amen. well thank you all for your testimonies let's go ahead and sing ultimately the lord is the one is it in there yeah okay 103 let's all sing 103 Go ahead and do one verse there. Well, we can do both verses. There are only two. Um, oh, how he loves you and me. One zero three. so much for your singing. Amen. Amen. Let me just, uh, I'm not going to preach long here. Go, go over to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. And um, 
just want to talk about God's love. And as, um, as the Starkweathers go, you know what? Um, I'm right in the middle of the sunshine. Let me, let me go get that pulpit. Um, Let's just start by asking. The start with us, and we pray for your blessing as they uh, head out this week. Uh, Father, we thank you. See, that's not, is that the right one? No, nope. sorry. Yeah, it should be on. Oh, there it is. Okay, so we're on. Um, sorry. Uh, freely give us all things. And the next question, who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Well, no one, because God has justified us. He's declared us righteous in Christ. And then he continues on, who is he that condemneth? Again, no one, because it's Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Being our intercessor means we are secure in Christ. There will never be any condemnation because our sin uh, from the moment of salvation forward will never be put on our account because it was already put on Christ's account. So just a wonderful truth. And then uh, the next question there, verse 35, who shall separate us from the love of Christ? And then he starts with a negative. Shall tribulation or distress? So two things speak of, of pressure. Is, is pressure going to somehow divide us from that love? And of course the answer is no. Uh, shall persecution, uh, being, being chased down for our faith, no. Um, Shall famine or nakedness, that means no food, no clothes. You may not have the very necessities of life. Does that mean God has abandoned you? No. God, that does, the, the, God's love is not curtailed based on that. And then he continues the, the peril or sword, uh, speaking ultimately of death and, and difficulties. And so even if we lack protection, does that mean God's love is gone? Well, no. And he goes on to say, and then he quotes a verse. That is, is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long, for we are counted as sheep for the slaughter. So what he's saying here, he says, you know, biblically we need to understand God's love is not going to be gone if we face these kind of things. Because really that's what scripture says. There are, you know, you go to the end of Hebrews, what is it, 11 there, you know, that some, some were destitute and some were naked and some were that, and, and the world wasn't worthy of them because they had trust and faith in God. And so all of those things, that doesn't separate us from the love of Christ. In verse 37, he says, no, it doesn't, for in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. And, and, and in fact, when it says more than conquerors, it's, it's super nike. 
Okay, we get the, the, the tennis shoe, Nike. It's a, it's a Greek word that, that means conquer. And so we're a super, we're above a conqueror. How? We know Christ loved us. Christ's love doesn't change, even though life can be perilous. It's always the same. And then Paul says, and, and here's, here's for us. When we know Christ's love is never going to change, he gave his life for us. God commendeth his love to us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We can never forget the cross. The moment we forget the cross is the moment we begin to despair because we think someone doesn't love us. And so God, God loved us and so Paul says, I'm persuaded, I'm sure of this thing, that neither death nor life, and so I think it's interesting that he says death before life, and I think we, we think, okay, what about death death things and he, he just says no not that and nor anything in life and I think anything in between there's nothing that can take place in this life Paul says I'm I'm convinced that's not going to separate me and then he goes on he says nor uh, uh, death nor life nor angels nor principalities I think angels would be uh, un, an, angels that have not fallen principalities it would be angels that have fallen so so whether it's angelic or fallen angels none of those can somehow interfere with God's love for us and then the next one, powers, which could go with principalities and powers, which would speak of demonic forces, or it could be just earthly powers, government powers, religious powers, whatever it happens to be, it can't separate us from the love of God. Um, you know, the powers is an interesting thought, and we know from Ezekiel 28, Isaiah 14, that there are powers that try to influence those in political positions. I say spiritual powers that try to influence those in political positions. See, folks, remember when we pray for those in authority? It's not just that we pray. We're praying there, there is a spiritual conflict that's going on. Because the devil knows if he, can, if he can influence a president, if he can influence a governor, if he can influence the head of a corporation, that he can make... He can make I mean, hundreds, if not thousands of people influence them in a way that's contrary to God. And so remember, you know, I've, I've said this before. Remember, false prophets aren't just ones who stand behind a pulpit. They're, they're everywhere that they can speak and make an influence upon others. And so that can, that can be in a political realm. That can be in the Internet realm. You know, that can be on a Twitter realm or, I guess, X realm. It's no longer Twitter or whatever it is. Um, but let's continue. So he said, or powers, or things present, or things to come. I, I think it's interesting he doesn't talk about the past. And maybe that's because that's where, where God showed his love, that Christ died for us in the past, and he's with us in the present, and he'll always be with us in the future. And so he, he continues on, and he says, nor any, uh, or I'm sorry, in verse 39, nor height, nor depth, um, and you could talk about the highest of the highs, the lowest of the lows, and, and it very, could be very literal of, of mountains and, you know, caverns. Um, I remember that just this past week, was it, where the guy was, you know, 3,000 feet below the surface and had some kind of problem with his, what was it, liver or kidney? Something, something he started to bleed internally. And so they had to get the guy, he was an American somewhere in a foreign land, and they went down and brought him back out. But I remember praying for him, you know, just say, Lord... You're, you're, you're there and help this guy and help the people rescuing him and they had like hundreds of people uh, who had to go down there and to get him across and back up and everything else um, but also it could talk about the ups and downs of life you know sometimes we're on the mountaintop and sometimes we're at the bottom of the bottom and those ups and downs God's love didn't change and he still loves you when sometimes you're ignoring him on the mountaintop and he's definitely with you when you're going through the valley. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, you need not fear any evil, for your shepherd is right there with you. Never left you, never forsaken you. So height or depth, nor any other creature. I think, I think the any other, and, and the word creature there, the Greek word can be creation itself or can be individual creatures. And so any, anything in the created realm. And I just thought, you know, if you go through that list, and, and this is how the mind works if you're, if you're discouraged about life. 
And you come to this, maybe, maybe, maybe the, the Spirit of God directs you. Oh, remember that, that passage about God's love? And you remember, oh, that's the Romans 8. So, so you turn there and you go, okay, neither lie death, nor life, nor angels, principalities, powers, nor things present, nor things that come, nor height, nor depth. Uh, it doesn't really mention what I'm going through. And so he put right the Holy Spirit or, or any other, <laughs> he said, or anything else. It doesn't matter what it is. He said, shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word able there is, is the Greek word dunamas. Nothing has the power to separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And so as we sang that song that uh, Rick mentioned, the, you know, was written on a wall a thousand years ago in a prison cell. You know, the love of God, nothing can separate us from God's love. And so as, whether you're in Montana um, or in Kent, um, God says, my love's there with you. And so don't, don't ever forget that, and none of us ever forget that, that in Christ, nothing can tear that love away from you. And so let's, let's praise God for that goodness. Let's, let's pray. Father, thank you for your love. Lord, though sometimes life has its dilemmas, even the, the, the tribulation and the distress and the persecution and the famine and the nakedness and the peril and the sword, oh Lord, that there is, there is a purpose and plan greater than what we understand in those times, but we thank you that through all of that, we can conquer it, we can overcome it because of him who loved us, because of your love for us, that love demonstrated in Christ we thank you that no matter what happens, that there's no power in heaven or hell. There's no power on earth, no power in the present, no power in the future that can ever separate us from your love, which we have assurance because of what Christ has done for us. Lord, bless that truth to our hearts. May we always rejoice in your love for us. In Jesus' name, amen. We will not have an invitation.